Okay, next job. Let's put in a reference list. Actually, it's not too bad once you see how it's done. Um, so we need to, at the end of our document, before end document, but after our last section there, we need to go forward slash bibliography style. And thankfully that's in there so I can just pick it out of the list. And for now, we're going to use a plain bibliography style. And once we've said, okay, we want a plain style, we now need to say, well, where is our bibliography stored? And actually, we're going to store it in another file over here in this list. So let's refer to it now. Um, and the command that we need is bibliography. And in here, we need to put the name of what our file is going to be. I've got this convention that I like to start with a number nine. So I go nine hyphen you could call it whatever you want, references or literature um, or whatever file name that you like. The reason why I want a number nine is so that it comes towards the end of my list of files. Because as your LaTeX projects get bigger and bigger and more complicated, you get lots and lots of files there. So I like a zero for my images that they filter up to the top and a nine for my bibliography so it goes down. You might have a different way that you like to do it. Okay, so where, how are we going to build this file? Well, what we're going to do is we'll make a new file here and we're going to call it 9-literature, like that. And actually, instead of a .tex file, we're going to call it a .bib file, which looks awfully like a, a LaTeX file, actually. Okay, so let's go in there. We'll click on that file and we'll just start building it. I can never remember how to do it actually. So suppose we wanted to cite this page here on Leonard Euler. Thankfully, Wikipedia teaches us how to do it. So if we come to cite this page right here, then what we're going to do is we'll come down and we want to go to the citation style BibTeX. And actually there's two options. There's two different options. Because we're going to be using hyperlinks in here, um, we, we're, it just works better if you choose this second option. Experiment with the first option here. And um, I, I think this is going to work a little bit better though for our use case right now. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that. Okay, and I'm going to plop it down here like that. So look, there's a few things that I would do to just change it a little bit. I don't like this sort of uh, spacing out here and I work in terms of tabs so yeah just checking they're all one tab across excellent um, <clears throat> so what's a lot of this is sort of self-explanatory the author the title the year and so forth this here I would like to change this this is going to be what I'll refer to in my document so I might call it wiki 2021 as in it's from Wikipedia and I got it in the year 2021. Um, I don't necessarily like the way that Wikipedia um, puts the title. I would just like to call it Len Euler, Leonard Euler, I guess it is, like that. Um, this is all fine. And yeah, here you can see actually in our package, I'll just go back to our main code here. We're using the hyperref package. Okay, so that's going to format our URLs really, really nicely. So that's great. So if you don't have that in your code yet, put in use package hyperref. Okay, so there we've got that. And um, yeah, this was the date that it was accessed. Again, I don't really like the way that Wikipedia does it. So I'm going to change it a little bit. Okay, uh, great. So what, what, how do we use this now? We've got to take note of this. Okay, and we're going to put that in here. So where can we do it? It doesn't really matter. I'll go in here. Um, Euler is awesome. Okay, that's the sort of thing that you want to back up with a specific reference. So we're going to go after the punctuation there, we're going to go forward slash site. And in there, we're going to put that nice label that we put. Okay, so hopefully this is going to work. Let's see. So I'm going to go back to my PDF and I'm going to compile it. And we'll see what we've got so far. Sometimes, by the way, when, when you're first referencing 
uh, using BibTeX, it takes a couple of compiles. Actually, Overleaf's really good though. Overleaf tends to get it right the first time. If you're on another type of system, you might have to press compile a few times and do various other things. Okay, so Euler is awesome. It's hyperlinked here because we've got the hyperref package installed. Here's the author. Here's the title. Here's a link that we can click on that will take us off here, which is great. Um, and you know everything else is there as well. We've got a box around that link right now. Oh no, that's that's fine. Now one thing that you've probably noticed is that we don't have a, a capital E, which is a big no-no, isn't it? So there's a few ways that we can fix that up. So we're going to come here and what we're going to do, it, there's a few different ways that you could do it. You could capture all of this name in braces like that. And that's going to say, please just write it the way that I've written it. Okay, and that's going to fix it. Another option is you could say, well, the one thing that I want you to capitalize there is this E. Okay, I don't, I don't think that reads as well. You know, it doesn't look as easy to read from our perspective, but it still compiles correctly. Um, so that's another option that you've got. I'd probably go with the first of those two options. Um, like that. And notice, by the way, that we've got commas at the end of these to say, go on to the next one. Okay, so there's our first uh, reference there that we um, have in our reference list. Now, let's cite this page as well. So this is a page on number from the excellent resource MathWorld. All right, so how are we going to build this one? Well, I would grab that and copy it. And I'm going to put this here and we're going to build another one. So let's make this math world 2021. Uh, often there is actually an author down here, a specific author. So let's see if we can find one. Um, this was written by, here we go, Eric. Weistein. What a great job he's done for the world. So Eric, hopefully I'm pronouncing his name right. Get rid of that one. Double S T E. Double S T E I. Am I getting that right? It doesn't look right to me. Okay, so that's good enough for now. And the title of this page is number. Now, in this case, we don't need those curly brackets, do we? Um, and in fact, we don't even need them here. I'll show you what I mean. So we get rid of that. Um, and then we need the link, which thankfully is a little bit nicer than the link we got for the Euler page. Like that. And now all we need to do is actually call on this in our document. So Euler is awesome. So uh, numbers. Okay, so forward slash site. And in there we're going to put this guy. Okay, let's build this and see what we get. Okay, so a few things happen there. First of all, and this throws perhaps a, a few students, so I'll, I'll just compile this again. Um, when you're first learning this, it can sometimes look like it's the wrong way around. You might say, oh, well, this is the first reference that I've made in my document. Why is it showing up as number two? Whereas this is the um, second one. Why is it showing up as number one? Basically, because I've just put these authors here in alphabetical order. Okay, um, so yeah, that's that's why it's showing up that way. But it's it's no big deal. It's just sometimes you'll have higher numbers showing up first. Um, one thing that I kind of skipped over a moment ago, you can see that I took away the curly brackets here. 
these braces. We don't actually need those for this name because in the for the author, it's going to capitalize things normally. It's just the title. Okay. So if this was specifically on the number one and we for some reason wanted to make that a capital, um, then we would need those curly brackets there because it, for the titles, it's going to plop down that to a small O, if that makes sense. Okay, so the, yeah, technically you don't need those. The reason why Wikipedia had those though is that I think... Well, I don't know exactly why it was there, but it's not required all the same. Okay, so anyway, that's uh, basically how it's done. That's how you put in references using the site command and this bibtech entry here. And at the end of it all, it's a really neat and tidy way of organizing everything that you need to organize and um, presenting your reference list in a, a really cool, easy way.